Hey Crossroads Life Groups, this is Pastor Tyler. Um, I had the privilege of being able to uh, share God's Word with you on Sunday morning, and so I am super excited about the topic that we got to cover uh, this past Sunday. And so I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit um, and kind of give us some practicals, some uh, some discussion points that maybe we can take a little bit deeper of a look at um, and talk about how this sermon really truly can impact our lives. Um, this, this past Sunday, we talked through Acts chapter 10. We talked through Peter's vision uh, th- of this angel bringing down this, this sheet filled with all these animals that were deemed unclean by Jewish custom, by Jewish law, um, and, and this angel telling Peter, rise, kill, and eat. Um, and, and this wasn't just a um, breaking of the customary Jewish um, traditional ways of eating and the kosher diet or anything like that, but it was really trying to get Peter's mindset and concept off of this thought that the church was only for the Jewish community. That it was only for people who were designated as God's people. And, and this is really a stark contrast as to where the church was at at this point. The church was so focused on reaching the Jewish world. But when we look at what Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew chapter 28, he says, go into all the world. And so this is where the church is really beginning to break beyond that barrier and making that decision that, hey, we are going to go out and reach the Gentiles. And this is such a crucial moment for the church. And so I want us to talk a little bit more about this in our groups today. Um, You know, one of the things that was really coming to my mind as far as uh, where we can go from here, I gave the example first off in my message about how in my life, I really desire to feel clean. I desire to feel clean. It's part of the reason that like, I do not like going fishing. It's not because I don't like the process of fishing. It's not because I don't like catching fish, but I hate the feeling of the slime of fish on my hands. I also talked about how when I'm doing a project, if I'm working outside, um, if I go you know, play sports, if I go play golf, anything like that, I love taking a shower first thing when I get home because I desire to feel clean. And, and so something that I want us to reflect on today is how do our own preferences and habits, like the desire to stay clean, sometimes influence our daily life and the interactions that we have within our lives. The second thing that I really want us to be able to talk about uh, today is this parallel that we see in Acts chapter 10. Peter initially hesitates to, to share the gospel with Gentiles because they are viewed as unclean in Jewish culture, right? It's this cultural perception of cleanliness. And so how can our culture or our personal beliefs affect our ability to embrace those that are really outside the church, those that we may view as unclean or not holy? How does that change the way that we look at our communities today? How does our own perception uh, of faith change that? So um, thirdly, man, I want us to talk about God's perspective versus our perspective. We're going to take a moment. I'm going to read uh, a passage from Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than yours. So I want us to reflect on this passage, right? And specifically on this portion where it says, for my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. How can we align ourselves more to God's perspective? How can we change our own mindset, the way that we think, the way that we look at outsiders, the way that we look at people outside of our traditional norm of faith, and be more accepting of them into the body of Christ. Not that we accept sin, not that we accept lifestyles that don't reflect Christ, but how can we accept those people that don't necessarily look like us into the body of believers? So I want us to really talk about how we can welcome others. But then fourthly, I want us to talk about the church as a hospital. I I gave an example from one of my college professors that, he, he equates the church to a wartime hospital, a battlefield hospital, if you will, and, and how 
really the church is not designed for those that are healthy. It's designed for those that are hurting, right? Because each and every one of us, we go out from the church on Sunday afternoon and we go back into the world where we're in a spiritual battle. We are fighting for our spiritual lives each and every day. And so it's not just a good thing for us to come to church on Sunday, but it's a great thing because it allows us to get built back up in our faith so we can be sustained to continue the battle week after week. And so I equated this in my message by saying that, man, we have to be welcoming to people outside of the church, outside in the, this community, because, man, the church is a hospital for people to get fixed up, for people to get ready to go back to war. And so we need to welcome people in, people that are broken, that are hurting, that are walking through the realness of life, and accept them and help them get fixed up so that way they can continue the fight. And so I really want us to dive into this and really talk about how this metaphor may challenge us to rethink our expectations of what a church community should look like. Really, and you'll see a theme throughout this entire discussion that this passage is really challenging us to think outside of the four walls of the church and into this community. And it leads us to this last question of application to our own personal lives. And the last question I, I really want us to dive into this week in our life groups is this. What practical steps can we take individually and as a group to ensure that our church or faith community is inclusive and welcoming to people of diverse backgrounds, regardless of culture or personal preference? You see, church, um, life groups, the, the church should look like the world in the sense of it should have people from all different kind of racial backgrounds, all sorts of cultural backgrounds coming together and worshiping the same God. It doesn't mean that we're going to welcome sin into the church. It doesn't mean that we're going to lay off of what God's word has to say about sin whatsoever. But the church should be diverse. The church should look like its community. It should reflect those that are within the community. And so I want us to really talk about this today of how, how can we make sure that we as the church body, the hands and feet of Jesus within this community, how can we make sure that we are reaching out to all people regardless of what they look like, regardless of what it might look like? Church, I, I just want to thank you guys for joining with us this Sunday. And as you dive into the word today, I really pray that um, your time is fruitful and that God speaks something into your life. So go out and let's make this happen.